it's crazy how much data that we still have coming in via email. There are so many form tools and order entry tools that are dependent on sending information to us via email. But in this day and age, we want to be able to automate those processes by taking the information that's in our email, parsing that information, and then pushing it into our relevant business application systems, project management tools like ClickUp or Asana. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we help organizations like yours streamline their businesses through automation and integration. In this video, we're going to talk about Zapier's email parser tool, which is going to give us that functionality we need to take important structured information in our emails and be able to take that data and push it elsewhere. The first thing that we need to do when we're creating our Zap is to find our trigger. And our trigger is going to be the email parser by Zapier. You can get that by searching for email parser. Now the email parser is one of Zapier's very popular apps. They've created this functionality that you can pair alongside with the other apps that it connects to. Once you've picked your trigger, you're going to want to make sure that the event runs on a new email, not a new inbox. And then we're going to go ahead and connect this to our account email parser by Zapier. Now to configure your email parser itself, you're going to want to go to parser.zapier.com and you're going to authenticate with the credential that you're using for Zapier. Now one of the problems that you might have if you're setting this up for the first time are sometimes as you're configuring this, you might run into a 404 error. If that's the case, I'd recommend actually going in incognito because this seems to help. There's some kind of weird caching issue going on. Once you're authenticated, we're going to go ahead and click create mailbox. And from here, it's going to create a unique identifier for your your email. And what you're going to want to do is take that email address and we're going to want to send it an email with the structure of the data that we're using. Now our mailbox is going to be auto polling to wait for that message to come through as we send that email. Now one of the things that you'll notice is that you actually do have the ability to override the email address that this is being sent to. This has to be on this at robot.zapier.com domain, so you can't really set up your own custom email for it. But to help you as you're setting up these mailboxes, you can add your own identifier to it. So maybe we'll add task manager to this particular one so that we can see, oh yeah, this is for our task management emails that come through, but it has to still have that unique identifier because this has to be unique across all of the different email addresses that are created for Zapier, not just the ones that we're creating for our company. Now this is how my structured data is coming across. I'm using a task management example. Maybe we have a form where people can request tasks for us, our clients can ask us to do things, but this could also be things like e-commerce. You might be getting orders that come in and you just get an email notification about it. However this is, it does need to be structured. And by that, it can't be just random email information and then we're just grabbing everything to deal with it. Now there are some advanced techniques that we'll talk about in another video where we can actually use AI to parse the information from our emails, but this particular tool is really only good at parsing that data that follows the same kind of structure every time. So what we need to do now is highlight our fields and tell it where that data exists. So here's my task request. We're going to call this the name of the task. We'll press save and you'll notice this replaces it with those curly braces. Here we'll add our priority. This will be our due date. And finally, this will be our description. Now at this point, we can scroll down and we'll go ahead and save our address and the template. Great, now we're all set up with our parser and we can use this information inside of our Zap itself. Now in the trigger step is where we're going to choose our mailbox. You might have multiple mailboxes set up, so this is where it's helpful to have that name task manager so we know which one we're pointing to. We can test our trigger and this is where we should see that email information come through. Now there's certain email headers that we're going to get automatically, but we're going to want to scroll down towards the bottom to make sure that those custom fields that we had, like due date and name and priority, that all of that comes through so we can use this in the further steps of our Zap. Now this is where we'll take the information and send it on to our project management application or whatever system we want to send it to. Now this particular step isn't quite as important what tool we're actually using. I'm using a tool called SmartSuite and we're using this for our project management. You can see I have my different tasks here, but you could be using something entirely different like Trello or Google Sheets. The important part is this is where we're going to map the information that we got in our trigger. So here we can start to search for our different fields. In this case, I'm searching for name and so we've got our part output name. We'll select that here. So now I've mapped the other fields that we have and I'm just going to set the status here to be planned. This is going to be the default status so that we can respond to that task as it comes in. Now we can press continue and we can go ahead and test this step. 
And as you can see, it now writes this task into SmartSuite or whatever system that we choose. So we can see our task name, we can see the status, the priority, the due date, and the description of this. All that information came from our email. Now you just need to publish and enable your Zap and you're good to go. I hope this has been helpful for you to see how you can take structured data from inside of email, use the Zapier email parser, and now push that to any of our business applications. If you have any questions about integrating your business applications, don't hesitate to reach out to automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.